that. Well, a 70-year-old South Australian mystery could be soon solved after the exhumation of a Somerton man from an Adelaide cemetery. A new police investigation will attempt to identify the man whose body was found on a beach in 1948. Joining me live is Derek Abbott, Professor at the University of Adelaide. Derek, this has been one of those um, intriguing cases, television shows made on it, people around the world intrigued by it. Um, let's go through the clues we have, of course. There was a suitcase found at an Adelaide railway station they thought might be the Somerton man's. Um, there was the Persian phrase in his pocket translated to, it is finished, and a code in the back of a book believed to have belonged to him as well. So this has led to speculation he might have been a spy? Uh, that, that's true. Um, though tests we've done on the circle code at Adelaide Uni, statistical tests seem to show it's just the first letters of words um, in the English language. So it does pour a little bit of cold water on the spy theory. But, uh, but you know, anything's possible. And um, uh, the, the interesting thing about the exhumation is uh, there'll be a chance to... Um, access the man's DNA and identify him, and um, mm. one could let the facts speak for themselves. Soon, and we hope. Can you talk to us then why you say, is it just that that would be too rudimentary a code for a, a you know, fully-fledged international exactly, spy? Exactly, yes. It, does it, it doesn't actually have the sophistication of a spy code. Correct. There was a phone number as well, um, believed to be a phone number, the, the woman um, at the other end of the phone denied knowing him. She was said to have acted strangely, though, when she was shown a picture. Has this taken on myth, or do you think this has significance? Uh, no, it's, it's true. Um, I've, uh, uh, one of the guys that was in the room when she was shown the plaster bust of the Somerton man uh, is still alive, and I've interviewed him. He's very elderly now. Um, he uh, basically says uh, it looked like she was even about to faint and he held his arms out in anticipation, but uh, she was OK in the end. But she was somewhat ev evasive and behaved strangely during that meeting. Mm. DNA has become crucial to solving so many cold cases. What, if they can get a good, what's known as you know, a good sample of DNA, what will be they, they be able to compare it to? Ah, now that's an interesting question because you don't have a specific person to compare it to. So it's not like a crime DNA test where you're uh, comparing a specific DNA sample to a suspected criminal. There you only use about 23 DNA markers, thereabouts. This is a completely different ball game. Um, here you actually use 800,000 DNA markers, hmm. completely different. And what you do is you look at whole uh, gene genealogical databases where people have uploaded their DNA to uh, try and find long lost cousins and the like. And so the idea is if one does that, then one can um, find distant cousins to the Somerton man, triangulate their family trees to find a missing person, a male person in 1948, and that then becomes your person of interest. And then you have to go through a process of validation to double check that that, yeah. uh, that name is in fact correct. Maybe perhaps pull up old army records, double check the photograph looks the same, that kind of thing. Yeah. Then right. one might so after th that... Those DNA um, markers... Those DNA markers, just to explain that to us, if, if you're trying to match it to an exact person, you can pull out these 23 markers and say they're all matching, that's the person. With the 800,000, is it just matching with enough of them and you say, right, same family in some element and we go from there? Correct. So with those 800,000 markers, uh, that will connect um, anyone to... to uh, all kinds of relatives, including up to fifth cousin. And, um, and it's from those relatives' family trees that, um, uh, that one can triangulate and find the man's identity. What's your hunch on who the Somerton man is? Oh, that's, 
That's a $6 million question. Uh, you know, I'm a bit agnostic about it. There's so many theories about what, what he could be or what he was doing. Um, I think one, once one gets the DNA, finds out who he is, it's better to let the facts speak for themselves because one can look up the history of the person through records and mm. find out. But, you know, if you put a gun to my head, um, I would, and ask me for which is the most likely hypothesis, <laughs> Uh, as a scientist, I go for the more boring one rather than the uh, fantastic uh, spy hypothesis. So the most boring hypothesis I can think of is um, is that he was probably doing something like black market trading in World War II and could possibly be an explanation why no one came forward to identify him because they didn't want to uh, have their activities uh, looked into. So um, that could be a quite a, a pedestrian explanation of what happened. Mm. Well, look, we're in the news business. We'll continue to uh, speculate. He might have been a spy, um, if that's OK with you, Professor. But we'll, we might know <laughs> soon enough. We'll, we'll talk again down the track. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks.